A 35 race long journey finally comes to a close. Four drivers in competition, one championship on the line. And with the departure last week at Homestead of Chris Dodd and Anthony McCurry from the chase for the championship tonight, we are guaranteed a brand new Hershey's Cup Series champion. Good evening, everybody, and welcome here to the Auto Club Speedway here in California. Dusk has just set down on this two-mile speedway, and we are getting ready to go racing for the uh, race here tonight, the uh, Auto Club 400. This is going to be a very exciting race here tonight, not only for the fact you're going to see these drivers be going three wide, maybe four wide, and making it work, maybe pit strategy coming into play, but there is a championship on the line as well, so it's going to ratchet up the intensity even more, plus the fact with this being the last race of the season, everybody else, the other 35 drivers in this field that aren't competing for the championship, they want to end off the year on a high note with a trip to victory lane in winning tonight's race. Let's break it down for you on the four competitors that are hunting down this championship here this evening. First off, you've got Joshua Michaels. First time that he has made it into the playoffs in his Hershey's Cup Series career, and it's in the final season of his NSRA career as well here in the Hershey's Cup Series. Three trips to victory lane, two during the regular season, one to start off the playoffs at Chicagoland. He has accumulated the most points of any of the drivers of the 16 that made it into the playoff grid so far this season. Then you've got Trent Dunham. This is not the first time that Trent Dunham has been in this position with a chance to win the championship. He ended up being in this position back in Season 3, but was unable to win the title. If Joshua Michaels were not in this playoffs, Trent Dunham would have been the one that accumulated the most playoff points this season, but he ended up having the second most, and he comes into this race with a lot of momentum as well after getting a pretty decent run at Homestead Miami Speedway that just barely snuck him into... Actually, no, he, got, he finished a DNF, rather, uh, but he just barely snuck his way into the playoff grid. Then you've got Dylan Young. This has been a career year for the two team. Three trips to victory lane, two of them during the postseason, winning at Bristol Dirt and winning last week at Homestead Miami Drivers, Speedway to lock himself up a spot engines. here in this Final Four. It's his first time in the playoffs as well with a chance of winning the championship. And then maybe the underdog driver in all of this, Garrett Sidner who has made the playoffs for the second year in a row. Last year, though, he ended up making the playoffs and got eliminated in the first round. Tonight, he's got a chance to get some redemption one season later and take home the championship. On the front row here tonight, you've got Nathan Hudson making potentially his last start in the Hershey's Cup Series. And alongside of him, Tim Walsh, a driver struggling in the points. The front row has not been to victory lane this season, and both of them on a bit of a winless streak right now. Could track position play a factor for them to find victory lane? We'll have to wait and find out. The highest starting playoff driver of our four contenders is the two of Dylan Young. So we'll have to see if track position starting closer to the front is going to help him in his quest to win the championship. 50 laps of racing here tonight. Our stages are going to be 20, 20, and 10. We'll have those stage points maybe play a factor in the outcome of this race as well. So who's it going to be? Dunham, Young, Michaels, or Sidner? Who's going to take the championship and be the defending champion heading into the next season, season six of the Hershey's Cup Series. Thanks everyone for tuning in this season. We're ready to finish off this year with a bang. The Auto Club 400 here tonight is green. Let's roll. Charles Sanford, California native here in front of his home crowd. Three wide for the lead. Trying to lead the first lap of the evening. They're already three wide behind him, but as long as they give room, they can run three wide all night long if they want to. Sanford, rear Declan full of Levi McIntyre. Here comes Jake Baskager up the inside, three wide per second. And who's going to lead this first lap? Will it be Sanford up top? 
or Baskinger down low. Outside line gets that big run off turn four. Charles Sanford's gonna lead the first lap of the evening. One year ago, Charles Sanford was here with a chance of winning the championship, but he just barely came up short. Now tonight, the pressure is off. There's no championship on the line. He can go out there, be aggressive, and just try winning this race. As Tim Walsh, using the outside line, is going to take the lead now from Charles Sanford. Trying to look back there and see if any playoff contenders are making their way towards the front. Dylan Young's been kicking from the outside. And now Joshua Michaels is down in the bottom. He's going to go side by side with Dylan Young right now. That is a battle, I believe, for the 10th position. And as soon as I say that, Michaels got some uh, momentum lost there on the bottom line. And now he's got Daniel Gilman and Kat Telly to his outside. Now they're going to go four wide. Benjamin Miles down to the bottom of the racetrack. So right now, Dylan Young would currently be the champion as he's side by side with last year's runner up in the championship standings, Blaine Keyes in the 42. Back up towards the front here, Emmanuel Hartnett has now jumped into second place. Tim Walsh running a slightly lower groove there through three and four. Apparently that's where his car handles best, but a lot of drivers like to run just as high as they can off turn four because you can keep your foot in the throttle longer and get a lot more straightaway speed coming down to the start-finish line. Dylan Young now migrating down to the bottom of the racetrack, going three wide with Alex Drayton and Blaine Keys. Joshua Michaels has been able to make his way to the top side. There you see him behind the 42, and right there, he's going to make the pass on Dylan Young for position. That puts Joshua Michaels now into the championship. Young going to try and battle back down low, but that outside line, you watch when he gets that runoff turn four, Michaels is going to swing very easily, I think, around the outside of Dylan Young. These two might not want to rest on their laurels though because here comes another championship competitor, Garrett Sidner in the 38. He's been able to work his way up now within striking distance of those two, maybe about three, four positions behind them. The only driver that's not up here right now competing for uh, this championship right now would be Trent Dunham in the one. Let's find out where he currently is situated. There he is, he's still back in traffic trying to make his way by Quentin Moore and James McLeod. The good news is he hasn't lost the draft. Because that's one thing that a lot of drivers were having problems with in the Tax Slayer Truck Series race here a couple of nights ago. And these cars run the same CTS physics. So if you lose the draft, you're in big, big trouble. While Joshua Michaels has now jumped up into the sixth position, he's now trying to go for fifth on Caleb Farrell. And right now, he is the championship leader. Not too far behind him, you got a battle between the two more competitors, Dylan Young and Garrett Sidner, the two in the 38. Young running in 10th. Sidner, I believe, last time by was scored in the 13th position. Joshua Michaels down the bottom of the track. Actually, all three of the championship competitors were down the bottom of the track that time out of the corner. It looks like the inside line works in one and two. It's the outside line you want to be in in three and four. And of course, Joshua Michaels and the other uh, competitors, they're trying to race towards lap number 20 to be up inside the top 10, so that way they can amass some stage points here as well. You know, we were kind of wondering what side of the spectrum would this race fit? I mean, in the Truck Series race, Nick Johnson was the dominant truck. He finished inside the top 10 in all three stages and just ran away with the championship. We had more of a battle, though, in the Pizza Next Series race. At one point, we had uh, Chloe Erickson and uh, Jordan Anderson, RJ Reynolds, and uh, Chelsea Balls all within the same proximity of each other, same vicinity of each other. So there was actually a battle going on on track for the championship. Looks like this race is kind of falling into that same category as the Pizza X Series race where all of the championship competitors, or at least most of them, are up in the same vicinity and there's actually a battle for the championship going on on the racetrack. Joshua Michaels getting kicked up to the top side there. And I apologize for the fact we haven't been following the battle for the race lead because we actually have had a lead change. Kev Shearer has gotten around his CJ Racing teammate, Tim Walsh, and is the current race leader, but this battle for the championship really has taken the vocal point for tonight's race. At the moment, though, it looks like Michael's currently sitting in sixth, Dylan Young in eighth, Garrett Sidner there in tenth. Let's find out where Trent's currently at. He's in 23rd place. 
We'll keep tabs on Trent during the course of the night and see if he makes any forward progress. So currently on lap nine, he's worked his way up to the 23rd position as Tim Walsh trying to run down his teammate, Kev Shearer. We mentioned that Tim Walsh has that uh, winless streak currently. Kev Shearer went to victory lane this season already at Dover, so he's not really on a winless streak, so to say, not nearly as badly as Tim Walsh's is. Tim Walsh coming into this race about a 75 race winless streak. Some other drivers that have winless streaks that could maybe end tonight. Kat Tellier about 81 races since she's last been to victory lane, and Nathan Hudson riding a 106 race winless streak in what's looking like it's gonna be the final start of his Hershey's Cup Series career. like the battle up towards the front not really going on so let's jump back again here to Joshua Michaels and now we've got a new driver out in front for the moment well as soon as I say that Joshua Michaels gonna go around the outside here comes Dylan Young the 10 the 2 and the 38 all battling and look back there just a little ways there's Trent Dunham he's working his way up towards the front so all four of our championship competitors might be up here battling for this championship pretty soon now we, uh, for, I forgot to mention that Dylan Young, Joshua Michaels, and Trent Dunham all ended up having a stage win during round three of the championship. So they come into this race all tied up. Garrett Sidner is one point back of all three. So Garrett Sidner needs to finish at least two positions ahead of all three of the other drivers. Right at the moment, that's where he would currently be, I think, with the fact that Levi McIntyre is between himself and the 10. We've run 12 laps and we've run them under green. This is 50 laps of racing, which means we could potentially end up having it be green flag pit stops twice tonight if this thing goes green all the way. Battle for the lead. Tim Walsh trying to get the inside line going against Kev Shearer. Can he move up in front of the 34? He tried to, couldn't quite do it. But I don't think Kev Shear is going to clear him down to one. I think Tim Walsh might be able to get the lead here in one and two using the top or the bottom of the racetrack. Down into the corner, Walsh trying to get the advantage. Can he slide up out of turn two in front of the 34? And yes, he can. He clears him. So Tim Walsh back to the race lead. Good battling up here between teammates. They're racing each other hard, but clean. While they're doing that, Emmanuel Hartnett riding there in third is saying, hey, you guys continue to battle and I'll get up there and be a part of this pretty soon. As Garrett Sidner has now moved up into the fifth position. Just got around his teammate Jake Baskinger. Right now, Garrett Sidner would be the champ as things stand right now. Dylan Young and Joshua Michaels trying to run him down. And there you see topside, that red machine. That is ripped on the rusty Chevrolet. He's up in the mix now. Now up topside in a four-wide situation. Almost five-wide coming off of turn number two. Imagine if Garrett Sidner needs to finish at least two spots ahead of the rest of his competition. And I think the caution might be out. Uh oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, I thought Trent Dunham might have been involved in whatever it was, but nope, caution's out. All four of our championship competitors are still running, and now this changes everything. Garrett Sidner for a moment looked like he was having a pretty good advantage over everybody else. This is gonna bunch them all back up, and they're all right within the vicinity of each other. Sidner is in fifth. Michaels is in 8th, Dylan Young is in 11th, and Trent Dunham in 16th. Caution out, we saw the smoke up there in turns 1 and 2, more in the middle of those corners. And it's been a good night for Tim Walsh and Kev Shearer, but their teammate Chris Dodd appears to be the reason for this yellow. And the pole sitter Nathan Hudson was involved in it as well. You kind of had that sentimental hope that Maybe, just maybe, Nathan Hudson tonight in his final start of his career would maybe be able to get a good finish, but now he's got damage. Saw Zachary Fitzwater, two-time winner, was on the pit lane. Don't know if that was unscheduled or not, but he came down a closed pit road. And now pit road is open, and all the leaders are going to probably be coming down pit lane this time. So let's see if our playoff contenders try and do any kind of strategy here to maybe gain some track position. All of them, by the time that caution came out, were running inside of the top 16. This will also set us up for getting close to going green, very close to the end of stage one. 
So some drivers might want to do something to get themselves restarted inside of the top 10. Kev Shearer going to go with a full four tire stop. Not a bad idea. Get that thing completely packed full of fuel. We don't really know just how close to the fuel window they were. And Kev Shearer may not win the battle off pit road. Dylan Poti with a good stop. Oh, wow. Kev Shearer's going to lose a lot of spots. I think JT Bryant just won the battle off pit road. With Baskinger in second, Hartnett was third, Drade in fourth, and Sanford in fifth. I think a couple of drivers that did gain some spots on pit road. One of them, I think, was Trent Dunham. Another one, I think, was Leon Alvarez. And JT Bryant. And the 22, his last win, last season at Dover. Out in front here, trying to continue on the hot streak that Young Motorsports has been on in the last few weeks. Let's take a look at a replay of what brought out this caution for the first time here tonight at the Auto Club Speedway. Take a look at what happened. Watch the light blue car there of Zachary Fitzwater. Right here, he's going to move up the racetrack to try and get an entry into uh, turn one. He does it right in front of Chris Dodd, and then Chris Dodd that kills his momentum. He turns down low to go underneath Fitzwater, and Hudson already had a run on him and was already down there, and that's how they made the contact. I don't know if maybe something was wrong on the 59 of Fitzwater, and he was trying to move out of the way or something maybe, but because we've seen some mechanical problems here this weekend. But uh, just wrong place, wrong time. Chris Dodd's momentum got killed, and then Nathan Hudson came flying in, and that's how they made the contact. So a driver that's making his final start of the season, final start of his career, and a former champion get involved in the first caution of the evening here tonight at Auto Club Speedway. Let's go back for the green as we get close to the end of Stage 1. Well, when the caution came out, JT Bryant was running in the fourth position. He was actually battling for fourth with Garrett Sidner at the time. So his team, very good on pit road, gaining him three spots to have him restart as the leader. Jake Baskinger will restart in second. Third place will be Emmanuel Hartnett. Fourth, Alex Drayden. Fifth, Charles Sanford. Zachary Fitzwater scored in sixth. I'm not exactly certain why when he came down a closed pit road, but... That's where they got him scored. Kev Shearer is in 7th. 8th is Dylan Pote. 9th is Blaine Keyes. And 10th is Cole Baker. Notice anything? None of our four championship competitors are restarting inside of the top 10. Garrett Sidner is restarting in 11th. Trent Dunham in 12th. Joshua Michaels in 14th. And Dylan Young in 18th. And when we go back green, there will be two laps remaining in this first stage. So Dunham, Sidner, Young, and Michaels all have to fight their way up here into the top 10 in two laps so that way they can get some stage points towards the championship battle. Up to this point, as far as bonus points are concerned, none of those four champion competitors have any bonus points whatsoever because none of them have gotten out in front to lead a lap yet. The stage points, if any of them get them here at the completion of stage one, will be maybe the first bonus points they will get here tonight. JT Bryant, though, out in front. He'll get us back underway. Green flag back in the air on lap 19. Jake Baskinger going to waste no time looking to the inside. He's already to the left rear corner panel. He may take the lead here out of turn number two. Already seeing some drivers making some moves down to the bottom of the racetrack. Garrett Sinder, Joshua Michaels. I think I saw Trent Dunham trying to get down to the bottom of the racetrack as well. As Baskinger to the race lead, Jake Baskinger winning uh, earlier on this season, dominating the race at Oswego. To pick up his first win of the season, looking for win number two. As this time by, it's the proverbial white flag for stage one. Michaels, I think he might be up in the top 10. Yes, he is. Sidner is as well. Where's Trent Dunham and Dylan Young? Trent's close. Dylan Young's a ways back. Next time they hit the line, the top 10 drivers get stage points. Sinder and Michaels currently are there. Trent Dunham's trying to get there. He's boxed in behind Charles Sanford. Nick Sinder is ninth. Michaels is 10th. As they come out of turn four, 
Baskinger is going to win stage one. And look at Baker with a big run there. And at the line, Sidner gets seventh. Michaels gets eighth. Trent Dunham just missed out. I think he finished uh, 12th in that stage. And Dylan Young was kind of nowhere to be seen. As Sidner up the inside line, he's now going to open a bit of a gap between himself and Michaels. And right now, as things would stand, Garrett Sidner and Joshua Michaels would currently be sitting tied for the points lead. Now the tiebreaker would go to Joshua Michaels due to the fact that Michaels has three wins this season. Sidner only has one. Right now, however, if the race were to end now, the championship would go to Garrett Sidner. Remember, Sidner had fought his way up to a pretty good gap over the rest of his competition before that caution came out. He was up battling for fourth place with JT Bryant. Joshua Michaels was back, I think, in seventh at the time. Well, Sidner has now fought his way back up towards the front. He's now back up in the fourth position. Daniel Gilbert right behind him. Gilbert, who got eliminated from the playoffs last week at Homestead. Look at Joshua Michaels trying to get a run there on the inside line. Almost three wide down this front straightaway. Garrett Sidner has definitely figured out that the outside line... Oh, trouble! JT Bryant's around! Michaels saves it! And look out! Right in front of Trent Dunham. He got through it. Dylan Young got through it. Caution's out. How did our championship competitors miss that? I don't know. Mike, uh, Matt Haas has been involved. JT Bryant was in it, Emmanuel Hartnett was in it. Caution waves once again here tonight at Auto Club. And I don't know how Trent Dunham missed that wreck. I do not know. Joshua Michaels got a piece of that. I don't know how badly damaged the 10 is. He's gonna still cross the line in the sixth position, but that was a close call here at Auto Club. Trent Dunham lost a lot of track position, had to get on the brakes to avoid getting involved in that wreck. But at least he didn't get involved. That's the good news. And Jake Baskinger, I'll bet, did not want to see that caution either because he was having a good time out there in front. Kev Shearer was slowly reeling him in, but I don't know if we would have seen a battle for the lead or not. So just nearing the halfway point of this race, Caution is out for the second time tonight, and it involved a couple of our front runners, Emmanuel Hartnett and JT Bryant. And it looks like the leaders may be coming to pit road once again, maybe? I mentioned that they would probably have to stop at least twice. They already came to pit road back during our first yellow flag. Are they going to come to pit road here under our second caution? Looks like Baskinger is going to come to pit road. A couple of drivers are going to stay out. Kev Shearer stays out. Sidner stays out. And Michaels decided to pit. What about the other drivers? Trent Dunham and Dylan Young. Trent's coming to pit road and so is Dylan Young. I'm not so certain about the strategy of Garrett Sidner. Unless he feels that those drivers coming to pit road this time are going to have to make at least one more pit stop before the checkered flag waves. I don't know. Kev Shear, though, inherits the race lead. Let's take a look and see what brought out our second caution of the evening. Well, we'll follow the 22 of JT Bryant right here and watch coming down to turn one. That car appears to lose some speed right there. I mean, you see that everybody just starts gaining on him. There might have been a problem with the 22. I'm not certain, but right there he gets run over by Daniel Gilbert and sent right down into Joshua Michaels. Michaels got some hood damage out of that. You could visibly see it buckle up there. And then up into the wall goes Alex Drayden. I think that was Cole Baker and nowhere for Emmanuel Hartnett to go as Bryant slides back up the track. Blaine Keys. And there you see Trent Dunham. Look at how close that was. He had to really get on the brakes to avoid. He might have gotten a little bit of right side damage. Oh, and then Matt Haas comes flying in, side swipes the, the 42 of Blaine Keys might have made a little contact with Quentin Moore in the 89. I'm not certain. Pretty hard lick there for the defending champion. As Blaine Keys goes by him, those two know each other very well. That Seven points separated the two of them with the championship on the line last season. Matt Haas winning and Blaine Keys coming up second. 
but a tough break there for Emmanuel Hartnett, who was running well in this race. JT Bryant was as well. And that brings us under the caution for the second time here tonight at Auto Club. Green flag going to come back out here on lap 28 of 50. Kev Shearer stayed out, inherits the race lead. The first car that hit pit road was Jake Baskinger. He'll restart in 13th, so the top 12 drivers did not come to the pit lane. We have two drivers out of the race, Emmanuel Hartnett and JT Bryant. Blaine Keyes, you see, is trapped one lap down. And you'll notice, restarting back in 32nd and 36th, are Dylan Young and Trent Dunham. Spent a little bit of time on pit, extra time on pit road. We're gonna have to see if it takes them a while to get up here towards the front. We know that they're gonna be able to go a little bit further on fuel than the top 12 drivers, but uh, we'll see how this works out. Garrett Sidner starting up in the second position. He did not come to pit road under that caution. Joshua Michaels did. He's restarting 16th, but we're gonna have to see if maybe that hood damage we saw him sustain from that wreck, if that's going to affect him aerodynamic-wise, and as a result, hinder him in speed as the green flag is back in the air here at Auto Club. Kev Shearer looking to get his second win in his rookie season. I'll tell you who this caution really helped out too, and that was Chris Dodd, the 88, restarting up in the 10th position. He and Nathan Hudson got together and were our first caution. And Hudson, I believe, is actually holding up some drivers there. I don't think he's 100% up to speed, but allowed Chris Dodd to be able to gain track position and get back up inside the top 10 after being involved in her first wreck of the evening. Meanwhile, up at the front, Garrett Sidner all over the back bumper of Ken Shearer. He wants to get another bonus point for leading a lap. Caleb Farrell there in the 95 there in third place. Keith Batson up in fourth and Brandon Gonzalez in fifth. We're starting to see some new faces up here towards the front of the field. Mostly a result of drivers deciding to stay out under that caution. But more than likely, they will have to be coming to pit road before this race is over. The only question is, Baskinger on back that came to pit road under this most recent yellow, are they gonna have to pit at least one more time? Enjoying a little bit of a gap from himself back to Joshua Michaels. The 10 car, like I said, had that damage and it has appeared to hinder him speed-wise. He has now dropped way back. He restarted in the 13th position. That time by, he was scored in 29th. He might have gotten trapped behind Nathan Hudson as well, which may have led to that, but I'm not certain. Now Trent Dunham's going to get around him, and Trent Dunham started the last car on the lead lap here on this restart. Trent's trying to fight his way back up towards the front. He is currently scored now in third and first, and a driver that has faded back since the restart is Dylan Young in the two. I can't tell if he's got damage or not. That car appears to be rather slow. One thing I would worry about if I'm Dylan Young is we saw JT Bryant lose a ton of speed down into turn one when that caution came out, which almost had the signs of either a tire going down or maybe something mechanical. Well, that's a teammate to the two. And the last thing Dylan Young wants to do with a championship on the line is get plagued by some kind of mechanical issue. As you got a battle here, this is for the second highest running playoff position. Joshua Michaels side by side with Trent Dunham. This is back around the 31st position. Meanwhile, their competition, Garrett Sidner, he's running up in second place. Only thing is, Garrett Sidner will definitely have to make a pit stop before this race is over. Michaels and Dunham, if they don't have to pit before this race is over, they could potentially be battling for a run down the line, the highest running position for a playoff driver. Up to this point, only two playoff drivers have amassed any bonus points whatsoever. Here at Sidner with four, Joshua Michaels with three. Sidner still trying to get the race lead from Kev Shearer. James McLeod has now moved up into third place. Nice run for the 51, but again, a lot of these drivers that were running up inside the top 10 right now were drivers that stayed out under that last caution and will definitely have to pick before the checkered flag waves at the completion of lap 50. If you're Garrett Sidner, you're hoping that you can make it enough of the way to the completion of lap 40 so he can get some more stage points. 
love to be able to get 10 stage points. Right now, he's in line to get 9. But he's got to make it around on this tank of fuel at least 7 more laps. Looks like they are closing on the slower machine of Blaine Keys, the lap down car. See if they can get around him safely. They go to the high side. Look at Garrett Sidner using the 42 as a pick. And he's going to cross over to the inside on Kev Shearer down the back straightaway. Problem is he didn't clear him before they got out of two. He might not even be able to beat the inside of Kev Shearer going down here to three and four. He's going to try it, but that outside line is going to kick in for the 34, especially with the worn tires. Maybe not. Wow. Garrett Sidner made the inside line work through three and four, and he is just barely gonna lead that lap. So another bonus point for the 38 car. Nicely done, what a move by Garrett Sidner to be able to lead that lap. We have not really seen the inside line work at all off three and four tonight, and Garrett Sidner made it work. And that now has brought James McLeod into this battle. McLeod was a two-time winner last season in his rookie year, made the playoffs in his rookie season. He's winless so far this year, trying to complete the sweep for the Tweenix Racing Drivers. Alex Drayton, his rookie teammate, went to victory lane at Las Vegas earlier on this season. Dylan Pote went to victory lane at Phoenix. So McLeod trying to complete the sweep of having all three of the Tweenix Racing Drivers go to victory lane. Another driver that's having a good run, even though he might have to come to pit road at some point. How about a former champion in Kyle Matthews there in that Kings Island Chevrolet? Nice run there. Only driver out of Retro Racing Enterprise who's yet to go to victory lane this season. Nice to see him having a good run here this evening. You know, one thing that we talked about Kyle Matthews a few weeks ago was the fact of, you know, trying to be inside of the top 34 in the points days. Kyle Matthews came into this race inside the top 34 in points, currently situated 33rd. So right now looking good for him. At the current point in time coming into this race, the five drivers that were situated with a chance of losing their charters for next season were Quentin Moore, Nathan Hudson, Tim Walsh, Cody Lamas, and Cody Smart. Now there have been some announcements for some of these drivers that uh, of, you know, charter swaps and stuff that's been going on. Tim Walsh more than likely will not make it into the top 34 in points after uh, tonight's race, but he's going to have the 88 charter next season. Chris Dodd going to be uh, loaning that charter over to 15 team, and uh, Chris Dodd will be using the championship provisional charter for next season. Also, we know that uh, Nathan Hudson is going to be retiring. Cody Lamas is more than likely going to be driving in the Pizza X Series next season. Cody Smart, they're searching for a charter for that 12 team, but if not, we'll be seeing Cody Smart take part down in the Tax Slayer Truck Series next year. As we had some dust kicked up there, and that's Jessica Shelton has blown up in the 0-2. Former playoff driver from this season, and the engine has expired on the Mountain Dew Pitch Black 2 Chevrolet. And here comes Kev Shearer to pit road. So these drivers, the 11 drivers that stayed out under that last caution are going to have to come to pit road here. And that almost says to me that maybe those other drivers that came to pit road, they might not be able to make it on fuel. But you see Garrett Sidner staying out. Now why is he staying out? Because we're getting close to the completion of lap 40. He wants to at least complete lap 40, or lap 40 going on to 41, be able to get some stage points here for this stage because the championship's on the line, but he might not be able to make it. I think he's coming to pit road. It's gonna be about a lap and a half short. Oh. Is Garrett Sidner of getting any stage points as Nathan Hudson hits pit road as well. That turns the lead over to James McLeod. Richardson in second. Winner of two weeks ago, Enrique. Kyle Matthews now battling for that position as Kev Shearer is now leading the road. And as this thing stays green, we're gonna have to see how these pit stops cycle around. Garrett Sidner is hoping that Trent Dunham, Joshua Michaels, that they're gonna have to pit before this race is over as well as James Richardson's gonna hit the pit lane. McLeod and Matthews still staying out. They might have been part of the group that came to pit road when Baskinger and the others did. So maybe these guys are able to make it a little bit further than everybody else. Kyle Matthews to the bottom of the racetrack on James McLeod. 
Take a look at some of the other people that have now popped up inside the top five. Cody Lamas, he's up in third place. Leon Alvarez in fourth, and Sean Galligan now in fifth place. Galligan was so close last week to being able to get the final position in the final four championship battle against Trent Dunham, but came up a couple of points short. Levi McIntyre has now moved up to sixth place. Seventh place is Brooke Allen. Eighth, Jake Baskiger. Ninth, Alex Drayden. And I believe Benjamin Miles now completes top ten. And the caution is out. Right in the middle of pit stops. And this guy right here, that might have been the last thing he wanted to see. Battle for the lead. Racing back to the caution. Cody Lamas. Kyle Matthews, Sean Galgan, Lamas is going to clear Matthews. Cody Lamas is going to lead us to this yellow flag, but what a horrible time for the caution to come out for Garrett Sidner. Looked like we had a spin on the front straightaway. And now is the question, I mean, for Garrett Sidner, he's trapped behind the pace car. So he will maybe restart ahead of the race leaders, but behind the pace car. If Cody Lamas and company do come to pit road. Eight laps to go, seven and a half right now with where the 48 is positioned on track. He's waiting for the pace car to catch up. But oh my goodness, that just threw a monkey wrench in this whole race. And there you see Sidner did not make it out ahead of the race leaders. Otherwise, he would have probably been able to go around. But now the fact that he is trapped behind the leaders and behind the pace car, when we go green, if the leader Cody Lamas comes to pit road, Sidner is going to get trapped off the lead lap. And Lamas is not going to come to pit road, so maybe this caution allowing some drivers to save fuel that might have been close. That yellow flag may have just spelled the end of Garrett Sidner's championship hopes, depending on where Michaels, Dunham, and Dylan Young are currently running. There's Dylan Young. Trent Dunham's going to come to pit road. And there is Michaels. Quentin Moore, Dylan Poteet on pit lane. We're going to have to see what brought out this caution flag here. As Cody Lamas is out in front showing the way. Damaged car of Nathan Hudson trying to get out of the way of oncoming traffic. Moves up the racetrack, and that's into the line that Cat Tellier was using. Both cars into the wall. Daniel Gilbert's going to get a piece of it right there. And, oh, wow, that's a shot into the outside retaining wall. Cody Smart going to get held up behind this in the 12. And then watch coming into view there. Top of your screen, Caleb Farrell. Big head of steam and just clobbers the back of the 12 car. You noticed right there, Trent Dunham just squeaks through. Michael, or make that uh, Matt Haas gets involved in another wreck here tonight in the 78. And where's the 10? There's the 10 of Joshua Michaels. Looks like he's going to get through it. Cole Baker literally up riding the wall to get through the wreck. Caleb Barrel's car comes to a heap in the infield. Looks like everybody had gotten away from the wreck at this point. Don't know how Matt Haas was able to see where he was going. That hood completely crunched up on the 78. But now this makes it very interesting as far as the points battle because we saw Trent Dunham was running fairly well, better than Dylan Young and Joshua Michaels, and that's this caution with trapping Garrett Sidner down a lap may have just handed the championship to Trent depending on how this race finishes out. But we are under caution for the third time here tonight. And uh, let's go back for the restart here with less than 10 to go and see who's going to win this championship. The lights have not yet gone out atop the pace car, or they will more than likely go out this next time, which means that we will go back green with four laps remaining in this race. And the question mark is, what about these drivers up here at the front? Were, were these pacing laps enough for them to save enough fuel to be able to make it the remaining distance? Or will we see some drivers dive to pit road on fumes before the checkered flag waves? That's going to remain to be seen. You see the lights have gone out, so it will be four laps to go when we go back green. Cody Lamas trying to end off a dismal season 
with a trip to victory lane. A win would not get him into the top 34 in points tonight, but certainly end what's been a very mediocre season on a high note. Sean Galligan lines up in second, third place. Oh, we got trouble! Garrett Sidner! The 38! Down on the apron, something is wrong with the 38! Got trapped a lap down, and now a bad night's gonna go even worse. His championship hopes might have just gone up in smoke right there. Oh my goodness. Well, Galligan's gonna restart second, Matthews third, McLeod fourth, Alvarez fifth. Then it's McIntyre, Brooke Allen, Jake Baskinger, Benjamin Miles, and Charles Sanford. We just saw Garrett Sender has some issues. Right now, the championship leader is Trent Dunham. He's restarting. Wait, no, it's not Trent Dunham. Yes, it is Trent Dunham. He's the only car that's on the lead lap. No, he's not. Nope, nope, it would be Michaels. It's Michaels. I'm sorry, Michaels. He's in 13th. I didn't see his name on the grid. He is in 13th place. Trent Dunham is back in 16th place. And I believe Dylan Young is a lap down as well now. He's in 30th. So it's going to come down between Trent and Michaels. Green flag back in the air now. The battle between Michaels and Trent Dunham. They came into this race tied for the points lead. Trent Dunham, though, does not have any bonus points. Michaels has three. Trent Dunham needs to finish at least four positions ahead of the 10 car. And they just lost a ton of ground here on this start. Michaels got held up behind the slower car of Blaine Keys. Trent Dunham's running away with the championship right now. Michaels with a lap machine is getting held up. Trent Dunham just gained a ton of spots and McLeod's coming to pit road. He couldn't make it. Three laps to go. It's not over yet. Anyone up here could run out of fuel. McLeod ran out of fuel. He's coming to pit lane. Can Cody Lamas make it? They're closing in on Garrett Sidner, who just left the pit road. Is Lamas gonna have to pit? I think he's coming to pit road. Lamas is gonna pit. Galligan, Matthews, they're all pitting. Who's gonna risk it? Brooke Allen's gonna stay out. Why the heck not? What a way to pick up your first career win in the Hershey's Cup Series if you can make it. Two laps to go. Brooke Allen, Kev Shearer. Is Kev a lap down? Yes, he is. It's Brooke Allen and next source of competition is the 03 of Charles Sanford. The other cars behind her are off the lead lap. It'll be white flag this time. Brooke Allen's coming to pit road. Hometown boy, Charles Sanford's gonna try and risk it. In front of his home crowd at his home track, can Sanford make it one more lap? White flag displayed. And where's Trent? Trent's still there. Trent is currently running. Wait, did he pit? I think Trent pit. Oh wait, where's Trent? He's fourth. Trent's in fourth place. Michaels just left pit road. He couldn't make it. Out of turns three and four, will Sanford be able to make it to the start finish line ahead of Benjamin Miles? Yes, he will. Charles Sanford is gonna win in front of his home crowd. He takes the checkers here tonight in the Auto Club 400. And Trent Dunham is gonna bring it to the line. He finishes in the fourth position. He is your season five Hershey's Cup Series champion. What a crazy last couple of laps. But it came down to who had the fuel. Sanford had the fuel to win the race. Dunham had the fuel to win the championship. What a race. What a season. That was fun. Sanford last season was in the hunt for the championship. He came up short. This season, not in the hunt for the championship. He was able to go for broke and gets the win in his home track. And Trent 
Dunham closes out the deal with the championship here in the Hershey's Cup Series. How about that? Five seasons, five different champions. Going back to season one with Anthony McCreary. Then it was Chris Dodd in season two, Kyle Matthews season three, Matt Haas in season four. And in season five, it's Trent Dunham with the championship and he'll head into season six as the defending champion of the Hershey's Cup Series. I told you it looked like this race could come down to fuel strategy at the very end and that's exactly what it did. Charles Sanford with the victory, Benjamin Miles will finish in second. Those were the only two on the final lap that had a chance of taking the checkered flag. Johnny Gardner finishes in third, Trent Dunham Brings it home in fourth. That's good enough to clinch the championship. Cole Baker was fifth. Quentin Moore will get rookie of the race. He will finish sixth with Alex Drayton seventh. Eighth was Jake Baskinger. Ninth, Sean Galligan. And tenth was Leon Alvarez. Only the top seven were able to make it on fuel in the closing stages. Brooke Allen, we saw her have to pit from the lead. She gets 11th. 12th for Kyle Matthews. 13th was James McLeod. Your Hershey's Cup Series Season 5 Rookie of the Year, Kev Shearer, will pit finish the day in 14th with James Richardson in 15th. And the last two cars to finish on the lead lap, Cody Lamas was 16th and Anthony McCurry finished in 17th place. And all the rest of your championship competitors finished way down in the running order, which very easily gave the championship to the top five finish of Trent Dunham. Joshua Michaels finished 26th off the lead lap. Dylan Young was 25th. Also a lap down, and we saw that issue play Garrett Sidner under pacing. He finished in the 31st position. We had 33 drivers finish the race, only 17 on the lead lap. Six drivers finished this race behind the wall. Daniel Gilbert, Matt Haas, Caleb Farrell, Jessica Shelton, Emmanuel Hartnett, and Jay. T. Bryant. But that is gonna do it, folks. Last season, a Sega Motorsports car came up seven points short from winning the championship. This season, they get their sweet revenge as a team as Sega Motorsports gets their first championship of the Hershey's Cup Series. Trent Dunham with the championship, Kev Shearer gets the Rookie of the Year honors, and Charles Sanford caps off the season with a win in front of his home crowd at his home track at the Auto Club Speedway, his second win of the season. Hope you guys enjoyed tonight's race. Hope you guys enjoyed this fifth season of Hershey's Cup Series competition. If you did, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to become a part of the crew today. We have shown you your full finish results. These are your rookie point standings, overall points, and your championship final standings. For the season, as Trent Dunham will be celebrating in Championship Victory Lane, Charles Sanford celebrating in Gatorade Victory Lane. We will see you guys next season for Season 2 of the Tax Layer Truck Series, Season 4 of the Pizza Hut X Series, and Season 6 of the Hershey's Cup Series. It's going to be a bit of a break before we get that going, as there's lots of announcements, lots of teams being put together, lots of schemes being painted, and of course, we're going to have to have some sign-up videos along the way as well. There may be a series that runs during the offseason. I haven't decided yet, but if there is, hope you'll tune in for that, and there'll be sign-ups for that as well. I'll probably make an announcement beforehand so you'll know when to be aware of maybe a potential sign-up video coming out. And also be sure to tune in to the other channel that I have, the NSCRA uh, live streaming channel, where you're going to get some fantasy news during the offseason as well of moves that are being made in Tax Slayer, Pizza Hut, and Hershey's Cup Series competition for next year. But anyway, thank you everybody once again for tuning in to this season, all three seasons of the three different series, and I will see you guys next time, as for the last time this season, you'll hear me say, you've been watching a production of the SRA, Offline Racing, at its best.